This is Live Talk with Dwayne Moore. We're talking worship on a global scale. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Live Talk. I'm Dwayne Moore, um, maybe a little bit more of a sedated version of me. Uh, I'm still trying to get back in the swing of things after a, um, a wonderful but long uh, and frankly tiring uh, trip to Africa. Uh, I've been there six weeks, just shy of t- six weeks, and um, got back this weekend. And so had a few days to recoup. And I'm about I'm about back to normal, I think. But um, I mean, it's eight hours ahead there. So my body right now tells me it's about time to uh, be shutting it down for the night. Well, I'm recording this in mid afternoon where I live in Alabama, but in Kenya, where I was just four days ago, uh, it is time to go to bed. And so my body still is a bit confused. Uh, but we're glad you've joined us for live talk wherever you may be. Uh, we have people that watch uh, as far away as Pakistan and other parts of Asia uh, via King Television. So welcome. We also have people that are listening by podcast in different parts of the world. Thank God for technology that allows us this to happen. We have people that are watching uh, on YouTube or perhaps on Facebook Live. And you may be a pastor or worship leader. You may be a a Christian. You may not be a Christian. You may be someone who doesn't claim to to know Jesus. You may not know him personally, but you're interested in people like me that talk about Christianity and talk about worship. And that's really what we do on this on this podcast, on this live talk show. We we bring you guests that uh, are leaders in the church. Often we'll do that, or they they are authors. Um, they may be business people who believe in Jesus Christ, follow him with their lives, but they also have leadership principles that anyone can apply and learn from. So wherever you are in the spectrum of that, welcome. Please know that you are very welcome and we are glad that you joined us. Today we have a special guest with us named Josh Anders. Josh uh, is a great friend. He's been a friend for uh, several years now. Uh, I, I remember how his wife, Deanna, actually reached out to me via email while I was a worship pastor in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, she emailed me a few times uh, just asking, is there any way that we that we can get together that, that I could actually uh, Skype in or Zoom in, as the case may be, and, and talk to the Bible study group at their church that was using my book, Pure Praise. And so they wanted the, you know, the, the guy that wrote it to, to say a few words to, to their, their class, which I was, was glad to do. If I have the time, I, I love those opportunities and I do those often. I did not know from that simple gesture, both from her and, and back, back to them in, in coming into their class, I did not know the friendship it would lead to uh, as well as the great partnership of ministry. Uh, as you will hear in this interview, um, we've been able to work together for several occasions, uh, doing several different uh, activities and conferences together and work together. And so uh, I'm excited to bring you Josh Anders as a as a as someone to learn from in leadership, uh, learn not only leading in his home, um, in his church, but also in his home. Uh, and the humility he has, although he's a very, very strong, talented leader. Um, he has a great dependence on the Lord. So you'll see all that. You'll hear that in a few moments. Before we get to Josh today, I want to tell you a little about the Africa trip, if you'll indulge me to do that for a few moments. So we'll be, we'll be back in a few moments with more live talk, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about Africa and what all God did there. And then we'll get to Josh's interview today. We'll be right back with more live talk. Thanks. You're listening to Live Talk with Dwayne Moore. International conversations on worship. Hey, everybody. We are back with Live Talk, and I'm Dwayne Moore. Uh, as promised, I want to tell you about Africa. I want to tell you about our, our tour there. Um, it was incredible. And, and, and I, I got to tell you that I'm still, uh, yes, I'm tired physically, but oh my, my spirit is soaring from how God 
uh, used Next Level Worship and to, to make connections there, uh, brought us together with some key, key leaders, um, got to pour into some wonderful uh, Christians and, and believers in, in the Lord, and also share our faith with those that didn't know the Lord. We got to um, teach children the gospel, teach them about worship out in the villages in, in Africa. Hey, there's a, there's a lot I could tell you, but I think if we let you see it, it would be better. So here is a, here is a quick overview in, in pictures of what we just experienced in Africa. Watch this. So you can see why I am beaming. I am so grateful for all of our donors. Um, many people pitched in to help support that effort. That was financially, honestly, it cost a lot of money to travel that many places and do that much ministry, pack that much in. And so um, we spent around $60,000 uh, uh, which was, you know, a lot of money for our small organization. It'd be a lot of money, I guess, for any anybody. Um, but you can't put a, a a dollar figure on a soul, you know. And we we saw many, and we're we're only not saying a number because they're children. We don't want to we want to we don't want to say exact numbers. Although I I have an exact number in my mind, pretty close to an exact number. I'm not going to say it. Uh, I'm just going to say that many children came to know Christ. We don't know. A child's heart. There could have been more, may have been a few less than I'm aware of, but uh, we know that many stepped forward saying they wanted to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Wow. And um, hats off to First Baptist Church of Lexington, Tennessee, to Olive Baptist Church in Pennsylvania. I'm in Pennsylvania. I don't know. I said that Pensacola, Florida, uh, to Chris Mellon, who is in Pennsylvania and uh, Travis Bly and uh, up in Syracuse, New York, and um, just incredible team of people that came together from from different parts of the uh, of the country and the world. Frankly, uh, I thank God for Mike Suey, uh, who came from Ohio. Um, thank God for uh, Joy Swinger who came from Virginia, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to leave some people out if I start naming and all these, but these are all people from, that are part of our team, our community at Next Level Worship, and they came together uh, to help us um, in this uh, six-week adventure. Now, not all of them came for that whole time. We brought in a team for Zambia, for example, and then they went back home, and then we had another team come in. So I would, what I would do, I would go to one place and, and work with one team, and then I would fly down to another country and meet, meet up with another team. Henry Pretorius, for example, who is uh, on our team in South Africa, and Mitchell Lawrence and his wife Carol, and, and, and this phenomenal team God is building around Next Level Worship in South Africa. Got to do that. Got to go see what God's doing uh, on, on the, the Western Cape. Uh, in Cape Town and never been there before. So got to experience that. Then we flew from there to um, uh, Zimbabwe. And in Zimbabwe, we uh, got to meet with our team. We have a, 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 a strong team there, Next Step Worship team, uh, led by uh, our director there, Linda Shia. And uh, we love her and her husband, John, and got to spend time with them. And and, and, and just pour into our team there. But also, we got to do uh, some incredible conferences that were packed out. In fact, they were standing outside. Uh, it was so, so overwhelmingly successful. And that's thanks in great part to our 
team there that did, a, did the groundwork before we arrived. And Donald Katala, our Africa director, and I uh, went to Zimbabwe together and got to enjoy that time. And then we flew to Kenya. And in Kenya, we had another U.S. team that joined us, as well as from other countries, Ethiopia and other places. And uh, we had um, another awesome day. Uh, an awesome week. It began with an awesome day as we got to meet up with each other. And, 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 and it's always good to see our team. And then it led to this phenomenal, phenomenal ministry together. Once again, pouring into worship leaders and pastors that came from many parts of Kenya and other countries. And also going out with, with the worship Bible school team, as you saw in the video we just showed you, and, and going into villages, teaching children about worship and the gospel and, and many, I think 99% of the children that they worked with there, our team that came from the United States worked with in Kenya were Muslim children, Muslim children. And uh, they were able to go into these Muslim, Muslim villages and share Jesus Christ with them. And knowing that those, those children, the songs they learned, the Bible verses they learned, the truths they learned about Jesus Christ, they would take back to their families. This is the ministry of Next Level Worship, and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. I never want to take it for granted. God meets our needs. He's, he keeps providing for us financially. I, I mean, it takes a lot of money to do what we're doing, but God always provides. He's just so incredibly faithful. One of the things we got to do while we were there, it was the very last thing we did while we were in on this long six-week tour. Um, uh, it, it happened in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, while I was there in May, back back in May, I was in Nairo, uh, in Kenya, in the country of Kenya. We were traveling traveling from uh, city to city doing conferences, as we often do. And uh, lo the Lord coordinated it. He did it all. We had nothing to do with it other than just being faithful and just trying to walk the trail. And uh, some of the very places we were in uh, with some of the leaders in these churches that were hosting us in conferences, I didn't know it. I know I did, but they were on the board of directors for the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. Again, I didn't know this, and they didn't mention it. But I'm sitting with uh, the president of the Baptist Convention of Kenya. I'm doing dinner with 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 Dr. Stephen and Ayinda, and he gets a phone call. This happened. True, he gets a phone call. This is back in May. And it's and and I'm thinking, well, he's a busy man. He's an important man. He's got a lot going on. Someone needs to talk to him. I didn't think anything about it. I just sat there silently while he was speaking on the phone. But within a minute, he handed his cell phone to me, <laughs> and he said, "This call is for you." For me, I'm thinking, who would call me via you? It was the general secretary for the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. I didn't know that Dr. Stephen was act is actually on their board of directors. And so Stephen had told the general secretary, his name is Nelson, about us and about Next Level Worship. So, so the general secretary wanted to meet up with me and, and, and have a conversation, which we met up at, at, at our hotel, my hotel. One thing led to another, and we you know, really saw eye to, eye to eye, and he said, this is what we've been praying for in this country. Our country, our churches need to learn about worship. They need to learn about prayer. And what you're offering could help us. I said, okay. So he invited us to do a conference when we came back in August, which we did. So that's why we stayed a, a couple of days longer than we would have normally stayed a few days longer. And we went over back to Nairobi and we did a conference. And we did a conference with, um, it wasn't a large room. I mean, there only 20 people there, but, but y'all, it was the movers and shakers, so to speak. It, it, it was a room full of top key leaders among the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. And uh, we just shared our heart, shared some uh, burden, shared uh, our message about prayer and about worship. Donald Katala and I uh, both spoke. And at the end of that meeting, just after a few hours time, one gentleman stood up, turned out, I didn't know it, but later I found out that he He's on the board of directors for EAK, as it's called. Uh, and uh, he stood up and he said to everybody, he said, I, I believe that God is in this. We, we, I, for one, want to partner with this ministry next up worship. And so they made it official. They gave us an official invitation to come and partner with the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya 
to reach out into their churches. And, and, and y'all, they've got 40,000 churches that, that are part of this organization across the country of Kenya. And every county of Kenya, they've got churches. And they want us to go in and teach these pastors and these leaders about true worship, about a biblical prayer. And I'm, I'm so humbled because I, I'm learning myself. <laughs> There's so much I need to learn, you know, but we're learning together in God's word. He's who teaches us. We'll just walk his trail. There's no telling what God will do. Amen. So that's what I want to share with you. And thank you for your prayers and thank you for your support. Many of you uh, give financially. You, you pray for us. You're part of our prayer partners list. Uh, and so you receive a monthly prayer partners letter from us. Thank you for that. And if you don't, you, please sign up. Send us a message and uh, just say, hey, we'd love to, uh, to tell, her, tell us, hey, I want to be a prayer partner. I want to be a partner of Next Level Worship. We'll get you signed up for that. Uh, you can email us at office at nextlevelworship.com, office at nextlevelworship.com. Let us know that you want to be a prayer partner. Maybe you want to be a financial partner, whether you can give a few dollars or a hundred dollars. We thank God for anything. We're grateful for whatever you can give. But this is the ministry of Next Level Worship. I want to take a few minutes and, and, and just update you. We're so grateful for what God's doing. I'll be going to Bangladesh later this year. Been invited to be a, a, a keynote speaker at a large conference there, and just see what God's doing in Bangladesh. And and, and we're about to do a student praise gathering uh, with students from multiple countries and multiple states and university students. Uh, it's exciting, and it's uh, we thank God for the team of people around us that help all this come together. Because I could not pull all this off alone. So thank you for for joining us again. I, I appreciate your time and please let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know how our ministry can help you. Check out our resources. Check out the things that we offer on our website at nextlevelworship.com. So as promised, we'll be back in a few moments and you'll hear from my dear friend, Josh Anders, who is the worship pastor at the Point Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We'll be right back. Live Talk with Dwayne Moore. Biblical Worship Perspective. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Live Talk. And uh, today is a pretty special day for me. One of my dear friends, Josh Anders, is here. Hi, Josh. What's up, Dwayne? <laughs> How are you doing, man? And and live talk nation. You know? <laughs> you know, we called it live talk because it originally was supposed to really truly been live. But every time we tried to live, it something went wrong. It, you know, we also <laughs> broadcast in other nations and even in Pakistan, and no one ever we never could coordinate all that too well. So now it's pre-recorded live. Does that really count? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> It sort of it is, right? It, it, it is live as we're doing it. It's so. live right now, and this is not scripted. Now, right. not I scripted. know listening to us, you may feel like it's very formal and we're reading everything, but no, it's totally off the cuff. <laughs> oh, I've learned a lot about this because uh, we oh, recently oh. started a we recently started a podcast here, and uh, yeah, okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not in the, the podcast, but my wife, our youth pastor, and our one of our teaching pastors are a part of it, and it's. It's been really fun. I've learned a lot about podcasting, so I appreciate what you well, do. Well, you do a good job. I, I, I saw part of one. I've been I've been gone most of that time. You've been doing that, but I did. I caught a little bit, and it looked like you guys have taken it really seriously. You you, you did some homework before you started. It looks. Good. <laughs> yeah. We're we're just trying to get up there like you, Dwayne. That's all. Oh so. well, that would, <laughs> that would not be difficult. To do. I'm think I thank God for Barry behind the scenes uh, putting it all together. Because if I didn't have somebody like that, I wouldn't be able to do this. But you, you, need, you, you need somebody working behind the scenes to absolutely pull everything yeah. together. And he he does anything from reach out. You know, he connected with you and yep. scheduled it. And 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 I don't think in this case because I was gone the whole time. I've been in Africa. That's another whole story. But uh, anyway, uh, I don't think we ever came up with a topic. But typically, with people we don't know as well as you, we'll. You know, Barry will figure out the topic in advance. Yeah. He said, what about Josh? Said, ah, Josh and I know each other. We can just shoot, we can just shoot from the hip and it'll be a breeze. It'll be, I, I sure say it'll be great. That is remains to be seen, but I believe at least, <laughs> uh, it'll be very good. So we're praying for great. Good. I hear that. But uh, yeah, man, well, thanks for giving us some time. Uh, it's, yeah. 
you got a lot going on. Uh, you were telling me before yeah. the recording started, this is probably one of the busiest weeks of a busy life for you, but yet yeah, it's it's pretty, so yeah, you. it's pretty busy. A lot, a lot is converging at the same time yeah. this week. And, uh, well, I mean, re- recently this year, things have been busier than normal for me and our ministry. And, uh, but yeah, personally and professionally, right. this is, it's a, it's a tough week. I, I, um, started teaching on a rotation at our church this year and there were events that led into that which we we can get into if you want but I started teaching on a rotation um teaching wasn't something I'd done a lot in fact probably the most formal teaching I started doing was with next level worship yeah, so, you did, you've done some teaching with us. It was wonderful. But yeah, <laughs> and I've, I've always felt the most inadequate about anything I do when it comes to just speaking with a purpose, because yeah. I can speak off the cuff. Yeah, I can fill a lot of time, mm. but speaking with a purpose and, and making sure that there's relevant application is something that's okay. that's a newer, like to be in a more formal format for me. Yeah. Um, it's very different than me leading worship and in God laying something in my heart in the moment and just sharing it between a worship song. Like it's it is so very different. different. Yes, I know that. And I, you know, I've learned a lot from you and others and 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 my former pastor and just, yeah. just learned a lot. And so um this is one of those weeks where uh I'm preparing a message. Mm. And uh, we're in the book of Mark right now. And so I get the privilege of Mark chapter 15, which is the crucifixion. And um, and so I, I almost feel like they they give me the hard hard ones on purpose. Before this, I spoke on the, the fig tree. And okay. then before the yeah. And before that was the uh, when Jesus sent the demons and the pigs. So it's almost like if we yep. have something that's really difficult to explain <laughs> and talk about, we're going to give it to Josh. Yeah. And so, uh, no, it's just the way it fell. But uh, so, yeah, this week I'm preparing for that. So we don't I, I don't actually deliver the message this Sunday. What we do here at the point is we record our broadcast services, kind of like we're I'm doing now. That. Yeah, yeah, just like this, this podcast right here. It's simulated live, right? Like it's live, it's unedited. And then you put it out. Well, for us, we record our worship. We record our messages mm-hmm. in advance. Um, and then, so whatever we record this week will be, and this is the week, uh, coming into the September 11th, um, will actually be the online service for the 18th. So I record it this week and then I deliver it live a week from Sunday. Okay. If that makes sense at all. So. No, no, really, I'm trying to understand it because I, you know, uh, you explained this to me before, but so the first people to, to get to hear it and see it are who? Online or church? It's it's simultaneous. So it happens at the same time. Okay. All right. I'll record it tomorrow. And then with the worship and all that, they do all the post editing and, and mixing and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, put it all together. And then it will broadcast a week from this Sunday, which is actually when I deliver it live. Okay. That makes well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Like that so it actually, actually it actually gets put out at right. the same time. It's just okay. I've done the work way in advance. So. Uh, okay, well, that, that's a discipline, isn't it? To do it in advance, what a concept! I'm such a procrastinator, you know. That that sounds scary, but it's good if you get it in. Oh, I, I am too, Dwayne. And let yep. me tell you, it's been yep. it's been great. The process has been great because it's a good discipline. Yeah, I can prepare the message. I can record it. And then I I have like a week and a half for it to kind of simmer in my heart. Yeah. And like, yeah. usually by the time it gets to me in person, it's morphed and evolved even more and has taken on like a, a, a new life. So it's the same, but different. <laughs> I do understand that. And um, I say I am a procrastinator. I, I, I actually reject that in Jesus name. I used to be. <laughs> But you don't I'm, claim not it. Gonna, I'm not going to own that identity anymore. Uh, I yeah. have actually become much more proactive and thinking ahead. Thank God by his grace. But, but I know what you're saying. Um, when you let it simmer, um, things yeah. can yell in a way that in boy, by the time it comes out of you, it's, it feels very fresh, but also well-prepared, you know? So yeah. Kind of a nice right, for a so, yeah so, so I've got, <laughs> I've got that. My um, it just so happens that my music director, um, I've given him the week off, and it just happens to be this week, which means I'm stepping in for him yeah, at the same time. On you, and yeah. then 
And then so on some personal notes, I've just my my mom who's her health has been failing. She's she's in the hospital right now. So it's just a lot of things. And one of our my fellow pastors was in my office earlier and he just said, you know, it, it never fails that when the hardest weeks come, it's like everything's coming at you at once. So yeah. So uh, well so it, 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 yeah. in that- even before we started the recording, you know, I, I said, do, you, do do we need to wait till a different time? Because, you know, you told mm-hmm. me your mom is in the hospital. You said, Deanna, your wife is there with her. Uh, everything's OK for the moment. <clears throat> but yes. uh, but, you yes. know, things could change. But but, you know, thank you again for giving us the time. But what I appreciate about you is you 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 keep your commitments. You, you, you've always been that way and you just follow through really well. And um I think what you've done there at the church, what God has done through you and and through Deanna and your family uh, is amazing. And so, you know, I want to say that to you and and, and tell you that today I was hoping part of what we could talk about is, is your journey there at the point. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, um, you know, I think people would love to hear that. It's an interesting story to me. Uh, I remember when you, when we first got to know each other and you were telling me on the phone then uh, I, I remember i was standing in a coffee shop in jeffersonville indiana when i was talking to you for the first real conversation and mm-hmm. i was amazed at, at at just how god brought you to that church you explained that to me some and now hearing how it's come to be now that you're even speaking you're getting getting other opportunities it's all clearly to me man standing from the outside looking in i know you're busy you're just kind of kind of stay afloat right now but i think it's i just see it's god's hand on you that's what i just want to say that so would you mind unpacking some of that for us uh, i just kind of put you on the spot here but yeah i'd love to hear your story well it's interesting about you asking that is that like my journey with next level worship began before the point like I was using your resources at my last church, our choir, you know, I, I would buy uh, the book, Pure Praise, Pure Praise. In, in the first edition. And yeah. I would, we, I was back in the first edition, it, <laughs> but we would use it to just equip our team and train them. And so I, I, I knew you from a, from an author standpoint and didn't really have that relationship, but yeah. So at that last church, which was in Tennessee. Okay. Um, Knoxville, wasn't it around Knoxville? Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, it just came a time for a change, you know, there was a change that was needed, and um, we were praying, you know, for the next steps, and, um, you know, as often as this happens, you know, it wasn't always in my timing, but it was in God's timing, and um, one of my best friends who I went to college with actually had the privilege of, we got we actually uh, was able to lead him to the Lord mm. uh, in college. His name was Joe, and we've just stayed best friends ever since. And um, and so we he moved to Fort Wayne after he graduated, and then I stayed, I guess at the time, in Tennessee. And there was a time where he said, hey, listen, my, I'd, I'd come to visit him. I'd been to his church, everything like that. And uh, didn't think anything of it. And then there came a time where he said, hey, he said, our worship pastor's moving. He's resigning. You should put in your resume. And I was just like, in my mind, I'm thinking there's no way that they'll think I'm a fit for this church. I just didn't believe that in myself. And, And he said, well, you know, they need an interim. So even if you just came for like a certain amount of time, and of course, I at the time I had a wife and three kids and but there was something in this moment, in this conversation, that God just was speaking to my heart saying, pursue this. As wild and as crazy and as, it, as much as it didn't make sense to like move my entire family to Indiana for a short-term commitment, like I knew without a shadow of a doubt I was supposed to do it. Like there was no, yeah, it was just like, it was, I'm sure it was a combination of what was going on in our lives at the moment versus, and also knowing that God was was tearing away the nest and that we were supposed to move on and praying for those opportunities. And um, so I interviewed, uh, I was able to secure the the interim position. I came, they were very honest and very upfront with me at first and said, you know, this doesn't mean that you're going to be the permanent person. We're doing a nationwide search. We got a search firm to, you know, please, please. We just want to be very clear that we're not promising that, you know, you're welcome to throw your hat in there. And I was like, I was like, you know, 
I had gotten to know the pastor. Uh, his name was Ray over the phone. And I knew from our conversations that he was the type of leader that I'd been longing to be under. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We aligned in a lot of different ways. The church aligned with what I was looking for in a church. And, um, and so I just trust the Lord. And, and, and my thought was, I didn't think I didn't have the confidence that I'd be the person either. And in my mind, Dwayne, I was praying, you know, if, if we do go for six months and then we have to find another place, it'll be worth it because I believe I'll learn so much that leadership. That, I know that, it's crazy. That's amazing to me. <laughs> it oh, doesn't oh. make sense. Well, and, and which I, I want to say, this is why I want to interject about now in the conversation on the phone while I was standing in Jefferson, yeah. Indiana, I was like, who is this guy? Because what I heard you say, and I hear you say again, yeah, I didn't know if he would get to stay. You just went, you uprooted, yeah. not from across the city, across, but across several states. States, yeah. <laughs> and you uprooted your family, not even knowing if you'd be, be there long. I think that's amazing, bro. That, yeah, that's, yeah. That's God. That's God. Yeah. It, it is. It, it had to be. And the fact that my wife was on board, she had a piece about it. That was a huge, huge green flag for me right and so we came we moved our three children the day after christmas 2013 um i started my role here i learned and grew a whole lot um there was just so many things that that were expected and and just a level of professionalism and also ministry and well the the search process was still ongoing while i was here <laughs> so that could be a little awkward, right? You know, you're serving and then my wife is starting to really love it here. She's like, oh no, you know, I don't want to move. And, and I'm thinking, okay, let's keep our expectations real. Yeah. You know, I have any choice, might have to move, right? That's exactly. what you were. That, imagine everyone listening to this conversation right now. Imagine being in this position. Wow. Yeah, it's wild. And, and the great thing is that leadership was so transparent with me. They would tell me, now listen, we, Here's where we are in the process. We've narrowed it down to these people. We're going to start bringing them in. You know, we're willing to like send you in Deanna, you know, Chicago is just a few hours. We'll, we'll send you for a weekend away. So it's not awkward. You yep. know, you're not here while they're campaigning, you know? And so it was, they were just very transparent and time went on and they never brought anyone in. They talked about it, but no one ever came in. And it was just like, it was weird. And, it gone down to the last couple of people and these people are like a couple of them I know, and they're well, well known. I mean, uh, worship pastors of churches of thousands and thousands and thousands. And I was just like, you know, I'm really happy for, for who's going to come in here. And I remember one day I was sitting across from my pastor and he said, Josh, he said, we feel like we've come to a decision and I just wanted to have a conversation with you and let you know. And, and of course I'm like, I'm, I'm preparing myself, you know, I'm like, okay, okay. You know, be humble. Like, like what God's got a plan. And he said, he said, you know, when we went out and we had the search firm looking for someone, they brought us everything we were looking for. But what we didn't realize was the target moved and you were the reason for that because we didn't realize that we weren't looking for a, a worship leader, uh, someone out front singing, but we were what we needed a pastor and you brought that and we oh, would love my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, we, wow. we, we, we would love for you to stay. Wow. And I was just, I remember just immediately just started crying. I was like, there's, this is not happening. This is not. Yeah. Happening. yeah. And to say that, you know, just, and it, not about me, but it was just, I just was pouring out what God was pouring into me, pouring what he learned, oh, what I learned from him and through others and through pure praise about worship and, and how to lead people and equip people and care for your team and yes. all these things in your church. And, and so, you know, we put down roots and it's been nine years almost, and we're still here. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, what a story. Uh, and still growing by the way. Well, um, you are, I mean, still learning. you're being stretched. Oh my word. Well, yes. He was a wonderful pastor and, you know, he, he felt led to, 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 to not retire exactly i, I know he's yeah no he retired yeah he well, retired. okay i don't know if it's official or not i didn't know yeah, but anyway, yeah. i wouldn't really put words in anyone's mouth but anyway he's not there is the point and right. in a very healthy situation i mean that's a great church it's really yeah. a healthy growing uh, congregation
Yeah, very diverse. We, you know, it, it wasn't always that way, but we started praying intentionally for diversity. We were like, you know, does our church reflect our community? Yeah. And if it doesn't, then we're missing something. We, if we're going to reach our community, we must reflect our community. And so, and so we started praying for diversity, that we would have our eyes open and that we would be a welcoming place for all people. And, you know, no matter what they look like. Right. And man, did God bless those prayers. And oh, we've yeah. just become a very diverse church, uh, age wise, race wise, you know, socioeconomically, you know, we, it's just, it's incredible. And just to see how God's brought it all together is amazing. And yeah, you know, our pastor retired and it was, it was a very, uh, you know, I was conflicted at the time because he is such, has been such a great leader and pastor to me, but I had to realize that, you know, at some point we all move on to the next thing, right? <laughs> We're all interims in a sense. Someone came before us and someone will come after us. So it's like, it. Yeah. And so I just had to realize that that time was now. And uh, so it took me a while to come to terms, but he did. And, and that's what led me to being asked to be on the teaching team because we're in an interim process right now. And uh, so four of us are rotating speaking every week while we're searching for a new lead pastor. Okay. Now that's what I want to dig into a little bit more now that you yeah. led us up to the, the present day. Yeah. Four of you are rotating. Is that now? In my mind, my I'm thinking of that once a month, or is it, or is it, is it nice and tidy like that, or? Yeah, so there's four of us, and so it averages like once a month. You know, okay. some may, depending on our schedules and people's availability, you know, some okay. may do more than once a month. Um, it's not necessarily like a it's okay not set in stone, but that's generally. Yeah, it's not like a clockwise rotation where here's Caleb, here's Ty, here's Josh. Okay. It's like we looked at a teaching calendar. And we said, when when are we able to fill fill these? And we just went through the rest of the year and just filled those spots. And Can I ask a very practical question for a, a leader in, in, in if they were planning like this. Uh, some churches um, I've noticed avoid announcing who will be that next preacher. Um, mm -hmm. they, I'm sure they have reasons for that. What do you guys do? Do you do you let your folks know, or do they just kind of come in and see who who who's there preaching in that day? Yeah, our we don't really project who's coming up next, okay. like who's teaching next. If that's what you mean, I, I, I do um, mean that. Is it predictable? Uh, that's what I meant. So. The, there, there is a hack if you're savvy. Uh, we, we, uh, we post, uh, an announcement for our broadcast service towards the end of the week. And if you pay attention to that, you'll see who's speaking that sure. week, but, but, you know, apart from that, we're not like, okay. yeah. And the met in the service, we're not like, and next week is Josh, you know, it's not like that. Okay. Well, so, you can see why I might be asking. I mean, I, I've read and I've heard, I've never been in this situation, but I've heard that some do that because they don't want people to come only for certain speakers. That's I true. I don't even know if that would really happen. Yeah, it happens. I've heard that, I've heard that that's a, a reason people, some churches don't announce it. Oh, no, I guarantee that happens. I, I mean, it was natural when, when Ray was here and he would speak, you know, 42 Sundays a year. Whenever he wasn't here, you would see a dip. You know, I mean, but, song. Yes, definitely. That's, you know, it's definitely that way with the main pastor. But now that you've yeah. got four and you know, I just wondered, do you see that same? Yeah, no, it's uh, not really. It's been pretty steady. Okay. In fact, interestingly enough, we've been growing through this process. Okay. Our church, our church is growing. It's wow. Wild. That, that is, um, well, again, I think that speaks to the health of the church already. And the, and the vision was bigger than a person. And I don't know how Absolutely. you guys pull that off. I mean, humanly speaking, that seems very difficult to pull off. It is very difficult because I think the larger a church becomes, the more the focus is put on who the pastor is. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a, one thing this process has taught me was Ray was always the person who didn't want to be out front. You know, um, he would do what he needed to do. But as far as just like he never wanted to be the face of the church. And so he equipped our team to be very strong. Fact, one, yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons why he yeah. said he was like, I felt good about the timing because I look he went to Africa for a couple of weeks to Kenya earlier this year. And when he came back and he was just like, man, this 
everything is just like if I hadn't left. And it was a good sign for that's, him. That's a good sign. Yeah. It was a good sign for him that, that, you know, the team is strong enough to move on. And, and I don't know, Dwayne, I, it's, it's been caught. I don't want to go down a rabbit trail, but like, you know, we're hearing a lot from like these celebrity pastors of just things happening. And, you know, unfortunately we're all human, but just, it just seems like I'm hearing something new every day of someone well-known, someone I respected. And it almost makes me think, do we elevate <laughs> our pastors too much? You know, well, I, I, I mean, possibly so. I mean, certainly I, that's always a possibility. I think we also uh, allow them to be isolated too much. Yes. Um, so elevate and isolate. I think we're not careful. And, and, and what I mean by that is they, they, uh, for whatever reason, begin to lack accountability. And I think anytime we do any of us, that can be very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Very dangerous. But it, it's definitely put into perspective the strength of having multiple people. Because, you know, even when some people found out about the news, they were, you know, of him leaving, they were just so upset because they, they had in this mind, their picture was the point equal our pastor and yeah. it, the point doesn't equal our it equals all of us and um and so we're seeing that kind of you know inadvertently come into fruition during this transition time where it is about god and and, and he it is all of us together and so there's a there's a huge team mentality right now <laughs> big time which is awesome and so in you know going forward you said until that person, yeah. uh, God reveals that person, you find that person. Do um, you think that's, you know, no one can predict, but I mean, could that be months? Yeah, that's what we've been told. We actually, sense, uh, you don't sense our, our rushness about it. Uh, so no, like, no. You don't need to be in a hurry, it sounds like. We're not, we're definitely not rushing into it. We, yeah. we, you know, our pastor was a founding pastor. You know, our church actually this Sunday on the 11th turned 17 years old. So, like, you know, it's an even, bigger uh factor is that he was founding pastor not so you know we're certainly not rushing into finding a new pastor but we are searching and we are doing our due diligence in fact we've partnered with a search firm who's helping us you know on a national scale to 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 look outward you know as 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 well as inward looking outward and seeing you know who fits the dna of the point the best you know who fits the model of a leader that we're, we're looking for to take us, you know, into the next 10 years or more. So it's like, um, so that's what we're, we're in the middle of the process and we, we keep the congregation updated. Like every couple of weeks, we give an update on how the search is going, what, what we're doing in this time. We have a search team, you know, so that's helping the process um, along with the search firm. So yeah, it, they say it could take six to nine months, and in this climate, where if you, I don't know, maybe you got some of y'all out there have heard this the term the Great Resignation that's taking place right now, where people who are it's just these leaders are just resigning left and right or retiring left and right. It's, They're retiring a lot of them. yeah, just because of the population and like and the demographic. And, and so it's leaving these giant holes and it's just, they, they said it could take longer because, you know, it's the same in ministry, not just in the professional world and, or in the secular world. I mean, so. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, yeah, you, you got a strong thing going there, man. And um, yeah, I, lo I love, I love hearing these stories. And so I, I wanted, I wanted also, you know, take a little time and tell us, you know, how are you balancing all this? I mean, you, you That's have a, good a question. <laughs> great family, by the way. I mean, you got this uh, awesome, talented family, and then you've also got in that, you know, you got this worship ministry that's that just, I think it rivals any of them, really. And now you're speaking. And I know that takes hours of preparation. So talk to us about how you, how do you do that? Well, oh. uh, in reality, I think it's just the providence of God because okay. the longer I've been somewhere, one thing that Ray always challenged us with is like, you know, as a leader, you should be putting something down and picking up something new, you know, a lot. And the putting down is a lot of times equipping others and delegating and, and helping to entrust others with things that maybe that you don't just have to do yourself. 
And then if you're, if you're putting things down in that sense, then you should be picking up something else constantly be learning and growing and stretching yourself and going deeper and, and not only what you already do, but you know, some new things. And so I've always kind of been in the habit of that and um, you know, kind of the way, you know, how it is a lot of times in the church world where you, you kind of pick up other responsibilities along the way. And yeah. so I picked up some administrative duties here. And, um, and so as, as I've grown and as the years have gone by, but, um, but I think that that's, that foundation has helped me to be like, okay, it's just another picking up of something. It's another okay. stretching myself. It's another growing, it's another opportunity, okay. but th- it would not have happened if I hadn't been encouraged and I hadn't been, uh, equipping my team as well along the way for sure you know, the fact that i can you know i can step away from the worship team uh, per se uh for about two weeks so whenever i speak it takes me out because of everything i have to do leading up to it, it takes me out about two sundays from the worship team and so that's like half, that's like half a month right and so if it wasn't for the strength of the, kind of the same thing with Ray and, and our team, our, our senior staff and pastoral staff and, and support staff, you know, if it wasn't for the strength of the team, there'd be no way. If I hadn't have done the due diligence that I had been encouraged by my leadership to do early on by equipping leaders on my team and growing the team and like doing all, there's no way right now I could have stepped into these things that, that God has opened up the door for and the needs that I could step into and be like, yes, I can, I can help with that. Yeah. And it's all because, and I, that's why I said it's the providence of God because God knew, obviously he knew down the road what was happening and he knew, he know, he knew why it's important to do those things first uh, to prepare, you know, for that, for those days. So uh, so the, the, I couldn't do it without the team I have without my music director and, and technical arts teams and the volunteers, no way. Um, I couldn't do it without a supportive family <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, and balance. Like I, I choose balance and it's something that's always been allowed for me to have freedom to, for that life work balance. And so I, I say no to a lot of things and then, but my family get a lot of yeses now. So, you know, so it brings, it brings balance and, you know, that's really, that's how, and just God, when I step into these moments and I feel like I'm inadequate or I come off from the platform giving a message and I just feel like, Oh, was that good? You know, did, did, did well, you know, just, just not feeling confident about it. It's, it's God stretching me in those moments and helping me to grow, you know, and, and filling in the gaps, so to speak, <laughs> um, where he's moving in, in spite of me. Right. And um, and so that's really if I had to boil it down, that that's how it's those things, you know, it, that's that's it. I mean, okay. without those things, it's not possible. Well, you said a lot there, but I'm going to try to yeah. boil down even more a few a few bullet points for those yeah. listening that I gleaned from what you just shared. You were intentional in pouring into your team over time. You didn't just yes. wake up one day and go, "I'm going to take next week to pour into my team." No, you've been doing this for a long time, and yeah. uh, and God honored that and prepared you in ways for you didn't what you did, did not even know was coming, but yet you're ready for it when it came. Uh, and, and so that that's something I saw. I think also you have the support of your family. I'm going to draw this conclusion, although you didn't actually say it. I think it's reasonable to say you have their support because you have so many opportunities to say yes to them. Yes. And that balance has brought that support from your family. As much as they love you, that doesn't mean they're going to support your ministry like they do yours. Um, right. You know, it's not a guarantee that they're going to automatically just love everything that we're doing as ministers. We've got to learn to say yes to our family a lot. I love that. I drew that from what you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love your humility. I mean, your humility just comes out of out in you, man. Um, those of you who haven't heard Josh lead, he's incredible. He could be the guy but he chooses something different. 
he's he you know that's what i've always appreciated about you you certainly are very strong out front but you uh have prioritized chosen to prioritize being a a coach and a pastor to your people yeah. and a, and a, and someone who pours into them uh even if that means stepping aside some so those are things i wanted to glean from what you just said to point out to people yeah yeah i mean you're right and and it's not that i haven't seen my fair share of struggles i have Sure. Uh, and the, and I've been through moments where I wanted to be done. You know, I I was just ready to do anything else. Uh, so for those out there who may be going through that season where you're just feel defeated, <laughs> you feel like there's no hope. Um, just know that there is and that just keep be, be faithful is what I got to say. Just be faithful, you know, uh, because God definitely came through uh for me and i know he'll do it for you i know he'll do it for all of us so it's just it doesn't come without its trials you know and in tribulations but uh the great news is that god is there with us every step of the way so well wow man well i always enjoy these conversations and so i don't want to wear you out today because i want to get you back some time to talk to you more (laughs) Uh, and, and I also want to say uh, thank you for the support you've shown to Next Level Worship. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, we, we love being in your church. We've been there. Mm-hmm. We've done conferences in your church. Uh, and uh, you brought your team to us. And uh, you've been to Africa. Yeah. And um, in uh, India. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's more than I can say. I, <laughs> I tried to get to India, but that's another yeah. story. It wouldn't let me in, but on a technicality of my visa. Thank you very much. But you and PG carried right on and had a great experience there. While I sat, remember this? I had to go back to Addis Addis Ababa. How do you say Addis Ababa? Ababa. How do you say it? Yeah. The anyway, uh, the capital uh, of Ethiopia, and sit there in an airport and teach um via online while you're there in person with all these wonderful worship leaders and pastors in the room in india (laughs) Um, and just if anyone's ever traveled overseas or to remote places just the fact that that was able to be possible was a miracle in and of itself (laughs) true true. i mean it, it just yeah you know it was just incredible just to see God pull through in those moments. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I, I didn't know what we were going to do. I mean, they wouldn't let me in the country because of this, you know, it's technicality, but it was it was not their fault. Right. It was really my oversight, but I just didn't, I didn't know it. I didn't know it would be an issue. But anyway, oh. um, and so it was like, well, thank you. And now we've left, left Josh hanging. He's there all by himself, uh, as far as only a U.S. person there, and and, and right. with PG. But you guys just rocked it. So you've been to India, you, you and, and you've lived to tell. You know, you've actually you continue to hang with us even after yeah. that fiasco. But it turned out to actually be a blessing, and God blessed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you just, you know, you and Deanna have come to refocus on several occasions yeah. when we were doing it live in person in Gatlinburg. Oh well, actually, Pigeon Forge, the Smokies. Uh, yeah. You guys were there, and then you, you're. We've had your team lead uh, from a distance, even when we moved uh, down to Pensacola. We've held a renew at our church. Yep, had a renew also, uh, a couple also, times. A couple times. What was the other one? The um, yeah, we do the, well. The, well, we don't do them now, but we did an intensive there with you. Yeah. Uh, and the only reason we don't is that we just got so much on our plate. We just had to right. let that go for a while. But man, that's that's where we really pour into and just dig into strategic planning. Yeah, we did that with you. Yeah. So you you've tried a lot of things with us, man, and you've been using pure praise and our other materials. So thanks, thanks for all that. Oh man, thank you for letting God use you. And next level worship has made a huge impact. I'm looking forward to lots of great partnerships in the future. So, so I'm thinking, so I'm thinking, and so just so well, everybody knows these guys are actually meeting in the old Sweetwater building. Uh, that's that's, yeah. that's where they meet. This is so cool. And so yeah, if you're you know, a worship leader, if, yeah, if you're a worship know. leader, there's there's no doubt that you probably You've heard this of here. Sweetwater. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's headquartered here in Fort Wayne. And it's literally yeah. just a couple miles from where I'm at now. But yeah, this room that we're in used to be a guitar room. So oh, you wow. see flat walls behind me. They would look so cool, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guitars and so climate yeah. control room and. 
And so, um, and so yeah. That room, man. That's a nice room, dude. They, they set you up. Well, well, let me tell you, if you ever get a chance to visit Sweetwater or something else, it's like yeah. their new loca- their newer location is like the Google of music. And oh yeah, um, they've got they just they opened up last year, I think, the world's largest like music store, and it's just it's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. It, you know, it's easy to take for granted that it's just like a, a stone's throw away, but. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, Sweetwater. This was. But I mean, you've got you, you've got people on your team that are, that work there, and I mean, it's just a great partnership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we do, and attend here, and yeah, absolutely. yeah, attend there. Yeah, I remember <laughs> when we first came up um, to just uh, we were coming through. We want to record you and in, in Indiana just talking about the resources of the next level worship. Remember that we we did a video with you, yes. and you said, "Hey, yeah. go." Yeah, you said, "No, this is like." five years ago now i guess you said you want to go over to sweetwater and eat lunch i'm thinking eat lunch <laughs> eat lunch at a at an audio store <laughs> it did not sound appealing at all it's like i mean i didn't know y'all like i know you now but uh, but right, I, right, right. all right i mean if he wants to go to eat it at an audio i guess i'll go oh my word it was like uh amazing a buffet yeah. and it was awesome yeah. and i went wow so uh i was amazed yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I'll never forget that. Well, I thank you, Josh, for the time today, buddy. Absolutely. Been good, man. Been good. I want you to go check on your mama and uh, get back to all that other stuff you got going on. But yeah, no, this is great. It's been a nice. It's been a nice little uh, interruption to my day, even though it was good. planned. Yes, it was a planned interruption. But uh, yeah, but it was. But- it was- I'm very thankful for this time. Thank you. So much. Uh, always, always enjoy uh, our time. And so we'll be in touch and, and, and get you back on here again and hopefully get you involved with some, some more trips and that down the road. Got to get you back. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right, buddy. Well, Hey, yeah. thanks everybody for joining us for a live talk. We'll be back next week and um, I, it'll be hard to top this guy, but uh, I, I promise you, we got some more great guests coming up. So we'll see you back next week for more live talk. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to Live Talk with Dwayne Moore. Live Talk is presented by Next Level Worship International. To learn more about our global community and find great devotionals and other resources on lifestyle worship, visit nextlevelworship.com.